Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Path to Mindset Mastery. This is one of uh, the sessions that will prepare you for what we will do in April. The Mindset Series, particularly the Shift Your Mindset Series, has some foundational pieces. And today's is going to be one of those pieces to help you make the best use of Shift Your Mindset, especially when we go into tackling the chapters that are in the book embody shift your mindset in just 30 days and without going through any preamble this what you see right here is the central piece of shift your mindset this is the central piece if you told me stories about your previous attempts at changing your life improving your circumstances if you did, and I listened clearly, I should be able to figure out where you struggled. As you were pursuing your goals and dreams, it should be very clear to me what level did you struggle at? Because the pathway requires all those commitments. You require each of the seven commitments. If you are strong in some, and weak in others, the weaker ones will hurt you. And this is where truly the strength of the chain is dependent on the weakest link, such that regardless of how committed you are, regardless of how passionate you are, regardless of how commitment you try to be, what is going to hold you back and sabotage your progress is how you perform on your weakest link. And your weakest link might be at the level of awareness, at the level of learning, the level of change, the level of action, resilience, reflection, or accountability. So the commitment to awareness means that you are willing to notice. You are willing to accept. You are willing to grapple with the truth. You are willing to see things as they are, not better than they are or worse than they are. You are willing to see things as they are. And that is the beginning of everything. When we set goals without, first of all, recognizing our reality as it is. When we set goals without accepting our circumstances as they are. When we set goals while denying our reality, we set ourselves up for failure. Because reality is very stubborn. You cannot sweet talk reality. You cannot exchange reality. You cannot buy out reality. You have to accept reality. And then work with reality as it is. Now, sometimes your reality can be a limitation. Sometimes your reality can be an opportunity. Either way, what you need to be able to do is to accept the reality as it is. And then figure out a way to work with that reality. That's the commitment to awareness, being committed to see things as they are, not better than they are and not worse than they are. Once you are aware about how things are and you have goals, you have dreams, you have a direction you want to go, you have to figure out whether you have the knowledge you need. If you are setting a goal to, to run a new business, you're setting a goal to start a family, you're setting a goal to change direction of your career. Do you have all the knowledge you need? Do you have all the learnings you need? What do you need to learn? And learning here does not necessarily mean reading books. It's learning your patterns, learning your approach, learning what is needed, learning the gap between where you are and where you need to go. And that's why learning by itself, you cannot start with learning. You have to start with awareness. Once you know where you are, then you can figure out what the gap is. What skills do you need to learn? What habits do you need to develop? What perspectives do you need to watch out for? As you approach what you need to do, do you, do you need to learn discipline? Do you need to learn planning? Do you need to learn delegation? What do you need to learn? What ingredients will be required to make sure that you have on this path what you need to get started? 
And those first three, they're all about getting started. Awareness, figuring out where you are, and accepting where you are without resistance. Accepting the reality and learning, figuring out what the gap is between where you want to go and where you are. And committing yourself to acquire the skills you need, the habits you need, the attitudes you need. Shift your perspective to be suitable for what you are going for and figure out what is it that other people who are pursuing similar goals are doing? What are they struggling with? Because these are your opportunities for learning. If you don't learn what the obstacles are, they will catch you off guard and they will sabotage your progress. Once you are clear about what your reality is and accepting it without resistance and figuring out the gap, the learning that you need to bridge that gap between where you are and where you want to go, the next level of commitment is commitment to change. Commitment to change. Now, you, you can't commit to change a behavior that you are not aware of. You can't commit to change a behavior whose impact you have not learned about. Therefore, change is stacked upon awareness and learning. Sometimes people know your behavior and my behavior better than myself. Sometimes people are more aware about your attitudes and my attitudes than we are. Such that when they expect us to change, when they expect you to change, without the awareness, they are essentially asking you to do the impossible. If people know that you tend to come late and you're not aware about it, the first step is to become aware about it. The second is to learn the skill you need. Do you need to schedule yourself better? And once those two are done, then now you can change. But it's extremely important to be to sure that you are changing in a meaningful way. You can change a house by painting the walls and you don't touch anything inside. You can change by changing your clothes, changing your hair color, changing your dressing style. So there can be superficial change that doesn't actually go deep within. As you prepare to pursue this goal, to commit to this dream, as you prepare to immerse yourself in this new vision, which areas of your life do you need to change? When you engage in an important vision, in a big vision, in a bold vision, it has to cause some changes in your life. Now, those changes can be automatic or they can be intentional. When changes are automatic, sometimes they tend to be overwhelming. If you are not in charge of deciding how you need to change, you can feel overwhelmed. And you can feel overwhelmed by a good thing. Speak to any mother who has, uh, after they have just delivered a baby and they don't get good support from the rest of the family, it's a beautiful blessing in her hands, but she can become overwhelmed. When you are in control of the changes that you need, you anticipate what the changes will be and you start making those changes. When you feel the discomfort of making the changes, you know that this is beneficial to you. You take better control of that process. Awareness tells you where you are. You accept it without resistance. Learning shows you the gap between where you are and where you need to know to go and what you need to build to bridge that gap. And change empowers you. Commitment to change empowers you to take charge of the process, to control the pain, to control the stress so that you are not distracted, you're not discouraged, you do not become doubtful just because of the discomfort that is related to change. Once awareness, learning, and change are clear, you are securely on the path, it is time for you to commit to action. We tend to run to action before we have explored our awareness before we've explored what we need to learn and before it is clear to us how we need to change. If, for example, you set a goal to join a gym and you need to work out every single day, your working out will be impaired 
if you did not remember to change what time you sleep so that you sleep enough to be able to go to the gym in the morning. If you try to do to start taking action without a solid foundation of the changes that create room for what you need to do. Commitment to action. And you are committing to actions that are consistent with your level of awareness. Actions that are strengthening the learning you need. And actions that are strengthening the changes you're making so that you make meaningful changes and you commit primarily to actions that truly move the needle forward. You can commit, for example, to maybe one of your goals becomes to build a house. You can spend the next six months planning and researching and talking to people. You can end up spending the, the rest of the year researching about what materials, what are the best materials, what's the best cement. It feels like action, but it's not action. Researching, preparing, and hoping. Actual action is those activities that advance the project itself. If you're building a house, are you actually laying the foundation? Are the bricks being stacked one on top of the other to build the walls? If you are running a business, are you actually calling your clients and speaking to them and hearing their problems and listening to them so that you do not take superficial actions? The best form of procrastination is preparation. When you stay in preparation mode and research mode and analysis mode, you're not making progress, but it feels like you are doing something. So action is stacked on awareness, learning, and change. Once those are secure, then you take action from a point of knowledge, from a, a point of awareness. You take action with a willingness to change so that when you take the first action, if it doesn't work out, you change to another. If it doesn't work out, you change to another. You keep iterating your approach, your process, to make sure that you keep moving forward. The next commitment is commitment to resilience. At the point that you set any goal, at the point that you set any goal and decide to pursue any dream, you accept not just the goal, not just the dream, but also the obstacles that come with it. If you sign up for an academic program, you sign up for the obstacles of attending classes, the obstacles of writing assignments, the obstacles of writing dissertations and thesis. If you sign up for a marathon, you sign up for the obstacle of going to the gym, whether you feel like it or not. You sign up for the obstacle of waking up in the morning and going to run, even if your whole body is aching. Why is that important to think about? Because if you do not anticipate the obstacles, they will stop you. That's why you need a commitment to resilience. Because resilience ensures when the obstacles show up, they don't stop you. When the obstacles show up, they don't hold you back. When the obstacles show up, they don't surprise you because you anticipated them and you are willing to use the obstacles as the pathway to resilience. So that as you take action, you are taking action with the mindset of waiting, all right, I'm taking this action. When is the obstacle going to show up? So the obstacle is not a surprise. The obstacle is part of your commitment. It's part of your journey. It's part of your growth. Awareness, learning, change, action. And once you start taking action, automatically you anticipate obstacles. What keeps you on the pathway to mindset mastery is resilience. Deciding to stick with it, whether you feel like it or not. Deciding to do it, whether you feel like it or not. Deciding to show up whether it's convenient or not. That's because the commitment to the vision rises above any obstacle. The obstacle just requires a change in strategy, a change in approach. It requires 
patience to stick with it until you are able to get through. That is commitment to resilience. All these previous elements are active ingredients of what you do, this first five. They're all active ingredients to do related to execution, related to effort. The next commitment is commitment to reflection. All our learning comes from reflecting about our experiences. When we step away from our experiences and perform structured reflection, thinking about what has happened, what we have done, what we are learning, all boils down to reflection. This is the single most transformative piece of all the seven commitments. You have attempted goals before. You have pursued certain visions before. The question is, beyond attempting them, did you reflect about them? Did you truly think at the level of reflection, searching for the truth of what was your awareness? What was your learning? What, was, what were the changes required? Did you make them? How did you make them? Did they work? Didn't they work? What actions did you take? What obstacles did you face? How did you respond when the obstacles showed up? All these explorations are done at the level of reflection. So commitment to reflection is the glue that keeps you consistently learning on the track. Commitment to resilience gives you endurance on the pathway to mindset mastery, but it's commitment to reflection that makes sure that you are not just walking an empty journey. You are becoming wiser, you are learning, you are growing, you are facing and overcoming obstacles intentionally. And of course, finally, commitment to accountability. Commitment to accountability is the willingness to engage support beyond yourself to help you stay consistent. I believe one of the most dangerous things that we do in our personal growth is trying to lead ourselves by ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that you can't lead yourself. Absolutely, we have to lead ourselves. In fact, self-leadership is one of the single most important factors in determining how far you will go in life. The danger is leading yourself only by yourself, where only your voice is contributing and determining how you move and where you go. Leading yourself by yourself is the fastest way to remain stuck in loops, in unproductive patterns, and remain stuck for a long, long, long time. Everywhere where you are stuck, everywhere where you are not progressing, everywhere you're frustrated, one of the reasons you're frustrated is because you the you are weak on several or maybe all of the first four ingredients. You are weak in awareness, learning, change, action, resilience. You are not reflecting adequately, but most importantly, of all of them, the one that will probably be the reason why you keep trying the same goals year after year is because you lack accountability. You have nobody to account to except yourself. When you account only to yourself, you let yourself off the hook really easily. At the sign of any obstacle like this, poof, you're gone. Accountability is what enables you to, gives you a reason to stay on for, not just for yourself, but because there are other people involved in this vision. There are other people involved in this dream. There are other people involved in the execution of this goal. As you pursue this educational credential, maybe it's a master's or certification, you're not just doing it for yourself and you're not only accountable to yourself, but you have a coach, you have a mentor, or you have a trusted friend or a family member that asks you the real direct tough questions. Are you BSing yourself or are you actually doing what you need to do? Did Was that obstacle enough to stop you? Or did you just need an excuse to get out of what you needed to do? That is commitment to accountability. Committing to stay on track, not just for yourself. Staying on track for your next level, staying on track for the people whose lives will be touched if you succeed in what you are doing. 
So those are the seven pieces that constitute the intentionality commitments. I've seen a me message from Winnie, guilty because I've lacked accountability. Yes, accountability is one of our weakest links. Accountability is one of our weakest links in almost every area of our life. Commit to awareness, commit to learning, commit to change, commit to action, commit to resilience, commit to reflection, commit to accountability. So this piece is the foundation of, of this book. And I do not call it a book. This is a workbook primarily. There are certain chapters in here that once you apply this principle, and it has two, there's another piece that uh, goes with intentionality commitments. Once you apply this to, to the chapters, there are 20 chapters, but there are some chapters which are really, really fantastic, such as strategic living, uh, active reflection, the chapter on a daily alignment, chapter on legacy-driven living, the chapter on redefined success. Do you have a personal yeah. definition of success or are you pursuing other people's definition of success? The chapter on transition mastery, when you face obstacles and unexpected events, do they get you off track or have you learned enough about yourself that you are able to recover uh, quickly? The chapter on uh, personal uh, clear uh, blueprint. Do you have a clear blueprint for your life or are you living life by accident? Do you have do you have a clear set of goals? Clearly defined personal mission, personal vision, personal core values, uh, your non-negotiables, your foundational principles. This is this is all covered in this piece. Now, I wanted to highlight a couple of other things to round up this discussion about the path to uh, mindset. And it's specifically important for you to pay attention to the word path. There are two things we keep uh, hearing about or thinking about, and the, the two things are your dream and your destiny. What is your dream? Are you living your dream? Are you pursuing your dream? And of course, there is destiny. And people tend to think that these two things are the same. They are not. Your dream is what you will become and what you will do. Yeah. It's about you. That's your dream. Your destiny is about the people that you will impact, the lives that you will touch. Your destiny has to do with what kind of legacy you end up leaving behind. Now, in pursuit of your destiny, your destiny will not be here today. Your destiny will come. In fact, you may not even perceive it in its fullness. It will be other people who see that, oh my goodness, look at the life he lived, look at the life she lived. Your destiny lies somewhere in the future. But your dream is some lies somewhere in between. Your dream is what keeps you moving. So the purpose of your dream is to put you on a pathway. And that's why we are speaking about the path to mindset mastery. The purpose of the dream is to put you on the pathway. The purpose of the path is to train you, to strengthen you, to prepare you, to test you. So that as you go toward your dream, you grow and gain greater capacity to fulfill your destiny, which lies way, way farther. It lies farther beyond your resources, farther beyond your reach, farther beyond your capacities. The path to mindset mastery is the path of being tested, the path of being trained, the path of being stretched, the path of being changed. Are you willing to grapple with whatever the path brings? Like Joseph in the Bible, who had a dream, he shared it with his brothers, and they threw him in the pit. And that put him on the pathway to becoming a, the prime minister in a foreign country. But the pathway tested him. The pathway trained him. The pathway stretched him. The pathway hurt him. But eventually, he was able to fulfill his destiny. He became the reason why a nation survived. They were able to find grain in a foreign country 
where the path had led him. The dream is the reason why he was put on that pathway. And the pathway is what led to his destiny. But the pathway was not smooth. Your path to your mindset mastery is not going to be smooth. It's going to test you. It's going to require you to stretch. Are you willing? Are you willing to consistently do things that help you conquer your obstacles? Are you willing, even when you are hurting, even when you are tired, to do things that boost your confidence? Things that help you step into the life you love. Now, let's just talk about the last one. Things that help you step into the life you love. If you eat junk food every single day, if you eat junk food every single day and you eat it in, in huge amounts, you will feel good by at, at the time you are doing it, but you will be stepping into a life that you will not love. So you will enjoy the process at the point of action, but this action is leading you. It's putting you on a path that is leading to a destiny that you won't like. In other words, to lead you to a life that you won't like. If you work out consistently, you're going to the gym, you are resting enough. You, When you go every single time you go to the gym, you'll probably be uncomfortable. But you will be on the path to a life that you would love. What you will become will be something that you love. So you cannot test what the future is likely to look like by what you feel like right now. Just because you feel uncomfortable doesn't mean that you are not headed into some beautiful destination. Just because you feel uncomfortable is not the reason to give up. Just because you feel uncomfortable right now is not the reason to discount where you are headed. And that is why it is important to always go back when you are feeling uncomfortable, figure out the discomfort you're feeling. Is it obstacles showing up at the level of number five, commitment to resilience, so that all you need is to stay on track? Are you feeling uncomfortable because you are not aware about what your capacity is, what your natural tendency is, therefore you need to make yeah. an adjustment? Are you feeling uncomfortable because you're trying to do something the wrong way? You need to learn how to do it better. Are you feeling uncomfortable because you are trying to pursue something that requires you to change and now the discomfort you feel is just resistance to change. And therefore, you need to continue pursuing it so that you can change. You go back to this primary foundational piece to help you figure out what the discomfort you're facing. Is it discomfort that is meant to stop you or is it feedback? that you are moving towards the life that you will love, that you can continue doing, taking the actions that conquer the obstacles you face with resilience, with reflection and accountability, things that boost your confidence so that the more you do it, the more you are willing to continue doing it and things that help you step into a life that you love. We are speaking about the path because the path to mindset mastery will test you, it will train you. The principle of the path states that your destiny is determined by direction, not by intention. Your destiny is determined by your direction, not by your intention. Now, direction can change. You can look at the illustration that I have given you. Your path can meander, but as long as it is moving forward, and even when there is a detour that feels like it's taking you backwards, as long as once that detour is over, you still have the opportunity and the steps you can take to continue moving forward. You stay on the path because your destiny is determined by your direction, not by your intention. Intentions are important if they are not accompanied by commitment to awareness, commitment to learning, commitment to change, commitment to action, commitment to resilience in the face of obstacles. 
commitment to reflection and commitment to accountability so that you don't get yourself off the hook. You don't step out of your path to the future, the path to your destiny, the path to your dream, just because you feel uncomfortable. That is the power of the principle of the path, that you are staying on track, paying attention to when you have discomfort, you figure out where that discomfort is. What is causing it? What do you need to learn? What do you need to change? What do you need to be aware of? How do you need to adjust your actions? What can you do to stay on track so that you can continue doing things that conquer obstacles, that boost your confidence and help you step into the life that you love? As you take action, learning and growing and stretching to your destiny, one of the things to pay attention to is where you presume the control of your life is coming from. Is it within you, within your control, or is it outside your control? And this will be in the next piece that we cover in the pre-Shift Your Mindset series that will lead to what we will do together in April. Your mindset, your mindset, which is your destiny, your mindset is determined by your direction. Your mindset is determined by your direction. Every single day you wake up in the morning, you have a destination in the evening. Every single week you start, at the end of the week you have a destination. So where you have arrived today is a destination for la last week. Where you will arrive next week is a destination for today. That's where you are going to. If we can begin to change the destinations in the interim, so that you arrive at a better destination at the end of today and tomorrow, better destination. In other words, you are becoming better, you're becoming stronger, you're becoming more consistent, more disciplined, more intentional, more focused, more perceptive. If we can change the micro destinations in between, the overall destination has to change. And our mindset grows as a result of these micro adjustments. Micro adjustments at awareness, at learning, at change, at action, at resilience, at reflection, and at accountability. This is an extremely important foundation, especially this seven piece intentionality commitment that all by itself, if acted on with purpose, this can be a life changing piece of uh, knowledge by itself. Commitment to awareness, learning, change, action, resilience, reflection, and accountability so that you don't get yourself off the hook over and over and over. And you find yourself pursuing the same goals that you were pursuing in the 90s today. <laughs> right, that's the end of that first part of of um, sharing.